Let's talk now about something else that you can do with paging hardware. We're talking about a copy on write for. So let's look first at a normal fork. So we have process A, and it has three pages allocated. If we do a fork, then what are we going to get? As we'd expect, we get a duplicate of process A. So we duplicate all of its pages, and that's great. And then process B and process A can now go about their business, and they have individual copies of everything they're operating independently. But if we look, probably 99 times out of 100, or maybe 99.9 .9 times out of 100, a fork is followed immediately by an exec, right? That is the child process is going to do an exec. What happens on the exec? So process A is the parent process. It's doing its thing. Process B creates all these pages, and then all of a sudden does an exec. What does an exec do? Exec basically replaces the address space with new pages from a, an alpha file, right, from the executable. So what would happen? We would now go ahead and read the alpha file. We would get rid of all these pages, and instead create new pages, perhaps more, perhaps fewer, depending on the actual executable. So this is great. This all works. The problem is we did this wasteful duplicating all these pages just then to go ahead and free them up and create other pages. So a copy on write fork is an optimization. The parent process and the child process can't tell the difference of using this optimization, but it speeds things up. So let's show how that's going to work. So how the fork will work is we'll still create a new process. However, this process is actually going to, instead of duplicating these pages, share the pages. So conceptually, it's going to look like this. So those shared pages work fine for read-only pages. But for writable pages, we're actually OK until one or the other of these needs to write. So you imagine we get these four processes, and now they can both be running along. They have different values of registers because right, those registers get swapped out in a context switch. But these page contents are identical. If one of them wants to write to a page, then we've got a problem. So here's what's going to happen. In the page table entry for one of these pages, so let's look at the page table entry for this one. So it's going to refer to this page. And then the bits here, of course, we have a present bit. And to begin with, we had a write bit, because let's say this was a writable page. When we do the copy on write fork, what we're going to do is remove this writable bit. So we're going to basically say it is no longer writable. That is, we'll get a page fault on a write. And then what will happen is we'll have to keep some sort of a data structure that keeps track of the fact that this page is in use by multiple okay. Really, what we can do is keep some sort of info about a page, and we can keep inside this a reference count. So imagine we have this for, for every page, because this will be useful. So for this page, we're going to keep track. I'm going to just kind of show this as a uh, page info sitting around that's referring to this, but certainly we'll have some data structure referring to all the pages. But we're going to keep track of the fact that now the reference count of this page is 2. Okay. And the reference count of this page and this page will both be 2. Okay. And we've also got our page table entries ensuring that these guys are not writable. For right, possible reasons are they didn't start out writable, in which case they will continue to not be writable, and then they can just nicely be shared and that's fine. Or they started out as writable and we're going to still mark them as not writable. And then what happens? Let's say process B tries to change this page. Well, since the PTE doesn't have the right bit set, we're going to get a page fault. The kernel is going to look at this page, look at the reference count for the page, and say, hmm, this reference count is 2. 
also look at where this page is and say, basically, should this page be writable or not? Okay. That is, was this supposed to be writable and yet we just marked it as non-writable because of copy on write? So the copy on write says when a write occurs, we go ahead and do the copy. We wait to copy until we know we need to. The original fork said copy everything. The copy on write says wait to copy until you're forced to, and you're forced to because you need two different pages with different values. And that is the last minute you can wait till then is till a write happens. So let's look at what happens. We would, the kernel would say, okay, this is supposed to be writable, but it's not. It has a ref reference count of two, so therefore this page is shared with other processes. I better make a copy now. So it makes a copy, updates, pointer here, updates, the reference count, updates, the PTE, sets this guy's PTE to be present and writable, and finally, sets a ref count of one for this. So what have we got now? We've got process A, which has it still its original version of this page because it hasn't tried to write to it yet. Okay? It's got a ref count of one, it's writable, so it can read and write as normal, we're not getting any page faults. Process B now has its own copy of this page. After the page fault returns, it can go re-execute the write instruction and directly write to this page. So it now has its own copy. These two are still shared. If process B now does an exec, then we will again replace all these. But notice we had to only allocate one extra page instead of all the extra pages from procedure A. Now are we going to have to do some sort of copying, even if we do a fork and then an exec? Well, actually we're guaranteed we're going to have to, because if we call exec, we're going to have to be passing some parameters on the stack, right? So one of these pages is going to be the stack, or at least the current top of stack. And so when we do an exec, the child process will be writing to the stack, so we know that's going to cause a copy on write, at least to the stack. Perhaps nothing else, though. And so that stack will change, the rest of these will be unchanged, will save the expense of having to copy all those. So again, we're taking advantage of paging hardware and the fact that we can get notified, that is, we can get a page fault, assuming we set up our page table entries appropriately, when someone tries to either write to a page or even read from a page if we turn off the pbit. That's some of the magic of paging hardware.